What's up, guys? Uh, here we are for another uh, episode. How you guys been? Uh, hopefully you've had a good one. So yeah, uh, let's move on here. We're gonna do some usual things, you know, some what I've been vaping, some advocacy and news, and then we will try a beer if we have time. Uh, it's been kind of a weird day for me today, so just kind of bear with me. Um. So yeah, let's just jump into it. Let's get into this video. Let's do some what I've been vaping. All right, guys. Uh, so what I've been vaping. Uh, first, we're going to start off with uh, the G-Class FP tank combo. In that, I got Marcellus. Just uh, been rocking through this. Been enjoying it. So, you know, it is what it is. Really good vape. Really good juice. Uh... I'm really liking it. I want to get some newer batteries just to see if there's a difference because the batteries I have in here are kind of old and honestly, I've been needing to replace them forever now. So it is what it is. All right. So then up next is the Warlock's Hammer. A goon on top. Crazy puke looking drip tip on there. And yeah, in that I am rocking uh, Orchata Churro from Dinish. And yeah, uh, not, I'm really, I've been enjoying the Dinish juices. I'm not like tearing through them, but then again, I got way too much stuff going on all at once. So it's just kind of taking me time through to go through things. So yeah, that, that that's right there. Do recommend you guys pick up some Dinish. Really, really good juices. Uh... Then next we have the uh, profile Warlock's Guardian combo. And in that I got Orange Bubbly from Danish as well. Really, really liking this. Um, I said it before, but it's a nice orange soda. I mean, I like it. I am digging it. It's really good. Um... Then uh, lastly, we're going to go with the uh, Hermetic on the S Rabbit Squonker. The Hermetic, let's see, it's trying to focus, but it won't let it focus. That drip tip from DHD, I think that's the uh, carry drip tip. Just loving how it turned out. Looks really cool. There you go. There you go. And it won't focus. All right. I'm just killing time for some for no reason. And in that, I got from uh, Slam Cake Vapes uh, Morning. It's like a uh, breakfast cereal kind of thing, like uh, Fruity Pebbles or something in that style. Um, with my my uh, e liquid super cereal, it's a cereal flavored juice. And I'm one of the com one of the uh, like comments I've always gotten on it is that it doesn't have that lemony taste in it. And uh, the only other cereals I've tried are kind of like more like cornflakes and um, what is the other one? Kind of like uh, not fruit flavored cereals. So other than mine, uh, this has been like my only experience with it. And I'm not going to lie. Yeah, that that weird lemon tang is in there. It's like the weirdest thing ever. Like the weirder part is that you get that punch of lemon first. And then everything else kind of follows right afterwards. And it's just really, really odd. Don't know how to explain it other than that. Uh, it is what it is. I, like I said, I picked up some of these juices at Expo. And I am just trying them out. So just seeing how it is. All right. So that's been uh, what I've been vaping. And we're going to press on. Let's move into some news and advocacy. All right, so news and advocacy. Um, what else can I say? Gasa.org, all of the other groups, uh, not blowing smoke. I quit smoking by vaping.com. Follow it, live it, breathe it, do what you need to do for the community. Uh, if It's one of those things of you can't expect somebody else to stand up for your rights to do what you want to do if you yourself aren't willing to do it yourself. Simple, easy. I mean, other than that, if you want to argue that with me, please do. All right, let's move into some uh, news and advocacy. So uh, this one is entitled, Senator Introduced the Smoke-Free 
School Act of 2018. Uh, this is published on the 9th, which was yesterday, by Angela Garrity. Yeah, Angela Garrity. Uh, she is an awesome lady. I uh, got to meet her personally a couple days ago on Friday. Uh, her and Nick were hanging out, and I was going to go meet up with Nick about something. And, yeah, really cool lady. Really enjoyed my time with them. They are entertaining to watch like as a couple. It's one thing when a person acts by them, like the way they act by themselves. It's another when they act the way they act with their significant other. It's it's a whole different world to see. All right. So Los Alamos Daily Post reports U.S. Senator Tom Udall, a Democrat from New Mexico, and Orrin Hatch, a Republican from Utah, have introduced the Smoke Free School Act of 2018, a bipartisan proposal would help schools, dis- districts, and local education agencies combat e-cigarette use in schools. The regulation would ban e-cigarette use in educational and child care facilities and clarifying that uh, clarify that state and local education agencies can use grant funding for e-cigarette prevention programs. It would also instruct Food, uh, Food and Drug Administration, FDA, to partner with the Center for Disease Control and Prevention (CDC), the department and the Department of Education to study best practices for schools to implement policies to address the rising e-cigarette use among students, and gaps in knowledge about the potential dangers of e-cigarette use among youth and young adults. The Smoke-Free School Act of 2018 would establish findings. The bill establishes findings supporting the assertion that e-cigarette use has become a public health risk in schools and among youth and finding the disgust and substantial increase in youth smoking in the past few years, as well as dangerous of nicotine addiction for people and under the age of 18, establish Congress policies setting role in ensuring tobacco is discouraged in the maximum extent possible. State that local education agencies should be given great flexibility to great specific funding to the effort aimed at eradicating the problem of e-cigarette use. Ban e-cigarettes in in schools amends the Pro Children Act to the, of 2001 to include the e-cigarette in smoking bans on educational and child care facilities. Currently, standing law imposes restrictions on smoking in facilities where federal funded children's services are provided including kindergarten elementary secondary education clarifying the federal funding under uh, the elementary and secondary education act or esea can be used for e-cigarette prevention programs amends title four of es EA to clarify the e-cigarette prevention is allowable use of funds to promote safe and health schools. As a result, state and local education agencies will be allowed to grant funding via ESCA of Title IV, Part A, Part B to combat e-cigarette use through the drug prevention programs. Currently, Part B is vague on whether or not e-cigarettes are covered, and this provision would fix that. And uh, it continues a little bit more on. Uh, oh, actually, here let's just finish it. I'm I'm on the last bit. Require collections to data studies to address knowledge in gaps of e-cigarette crisis. Instru- in yeah. Uh, instructs the FDA to partner with the CDC and Department of Education to conduct studies of best practices for school to discourage e-cigarette use. It also instructs the FDA studi- studies. Gaps in knowledge of harm of e-cigarettes among adolescents and youth, including injuries and poisoning. It seeks further information and dose response association between e-cigarettes, combustible tobacco, and the current efforts by schools to use federal funding to combat e-cigarette use. Finally, it instructs the Federal Trade Commission's FTC to... Consider including e-cigarettes in any studies they do relating to marketing effects of traditional uh, tobacco. Then it 
actually has like the full like a link for the full full story of what's happening here on uh la deal la daily post so it's a la la based thing oh los alamos sorry uh, wrong la but it's still uh, it's still in la all right so um, and you guys I'll, I'll post the link to both both uh both articles on the description so i'll try to keep that in mind but uh in all reality just would I rather vaping and smoking not be in schools? Yes, I am all for that. That to me is, uh, that is a real thing. I, I'm not going to argue that. I'm not. I really am not. There is no way you can argue it, nor should you. I mean, I feel that I started smoking at 13, and if the education was better, maybe it would have prevented me from doing it. Maybe it wasn't enough. But at least the system I came from, Cause I, I was in, when I started smoking, I was going to school in LA. So that was a completely different style of life and everything, how everything's done over there is different. And I feel like, uh, dare as much as they tried, that was a failed program. Uh, by the time it got to my age group, I feel that the message was completely lost and they didn't know what they were exactly doing. Here, I'm going to adjust my mic. I feel like it's all off over here. Like it's a little too far. All right. So I feel like a lot of the message was lost and not enough was actually being educated properly. But then again, I just don't know if it's because of where I grew up, what school I was going to, what this, this and that. I mean, I'm sorry, but if you want to tell me gerrymandering isn't a thing, you're fucking full of shit. I grew up in a school that was predominantly Hispanic. I grew up in a neighborhood that was Hispanic and I didn't really start meeting white people until I was in like high school. Uh, both my junior high and high school were very, very, very Hispanic there. There was not much blending of people. And part of it is the area I grew up in. Part of it is just, I mean, LA County, the way their schools work is you can pull, you could go to any school within the County. You don't have to like here in Texas, it's within your town. Over there, it's more within your county because they do do bigger government kind of stuff. So within LA County, you could well when I went when I went to school when I was a kid, within LA County, you could go to any school. We were like in high school, we were having kids from like LA itself coming all the way to where I lived, and I was like an hour north. So they would actually take a school bus or regular city buses and stuff and make the journey over to the school we went to. Uh. And things like that. It was just like the weirdest thing, you know, like once we got to high school, we were like kind of meeting people from like all sorts of different areas of our county that none of them really lived within our county. Like it was a big high school and we were more of a melting pot at that point. But growing up junior high, high school, it was very, very, uh, very sterile. So uh, I feel that maybe our education wasn't proper just based on where we come from, maybe we just didn't listen the way we were supposed to. I don't know. I really don't know what to say. Uh, it's one of those weird things of uh, education is everything, but I do feel that at a point, no matter how much you're educated on dangers, no matter how much you're educated on what to do, what not to do, it all ultimately falls onto you and what kind of person you are. I, for the most part, was like a weird, uh, rebellious, stay within the line kind of person. As a kid, I would try to like play the game in a way where I got away with doing things, but still managed to stay within tow so I wouldn't get in more trouble than I needed to. And I mean, we are where we're at. I'm a tattooed, pierced, bearded guy now with vapes. So that's who I am for the most part. All right, so I was going to move on to the this next article over here. Uh, this one is called uh, Vape Shop Moratorium Challenged. Uh, a six-month moratorium in new vape and smoke m- shops in Ma- Mohawk, Mohawk, Mohawk. Any New Yorkers, correct me on this, Mohawk, Mohawk is under challenge uh, from a couple who maintain that they began building their business back in April with no knowledge of the independent action from the city. Nick and Ann 
Mega Megal Glez sign. I have no idea. I am so sorry. I'm butchering your name. You people do need your your voice being spoke for. Uh, they signed a lease for a property located on 44 Route 441 on uh located at 441 Route 6 Moha Moha Moho Mahapak. I'm having a hard time pronouncing that, and it's bothering me. Uh, with the intention of opening an imperial vape and smoke shop there. The Megaldis are shareholders in a, in the company. They spent six months paying the, the rent for the location as well as investing in renovations and inventory. Now it will all be, may all have been for nothing. New couple is before the zoning board of appeals seeking variance according to their attorney, William Schilling Jr., uh, my client started preparing for this last year and negotiated the terms for the lease in April of 2018. They borrowed money to make this happen. They painted, they cleaned, they bought inventory, and they hired employees, purchased, and installed cabinets. So far, according to the shillings, Megal, the, um, the Geldeses, I'm sorry, I, I, you, I'm going to post the link so you guys can read the name. I'm sorry if I butchered it. If anybody knows the proper way to pronounce this, let me know. Been nothing but cooperative with the city. In uh, in August, they notified that the building permit was, was required for the renovation of the space at 40, 441 Route 6. No structural change to the space were planned, nor were any affected. Nonetheless, they dutifully applied for a permit all the same. Then the moratorium came down in October 1st. However, the moratorium grandfathered an existing vapor and smoke shop. Schilling asset asserted that it was because the business operate operations were already in progress at the Imperial Imperial Vape and Smoke Shop. Location, their business should have been considered to be among those grandfathered establishments or alternately received a variance. And the article continues a little bit more after that. And I that sucks. Uh, I personally, uh, my feelings on it is makes me wonder if they're just not wanting to deal with them and they just don't want them in their area. And that's just it. It, I mean, it could be a possibility of things. It could be a number of things, and it sucks for them. It really does. I'm not gonna lie that I I hate to see them lose their business. I hopefully they conduct good business. They're good for the community, and they are able to to pass their zoning commissions and all that kind of thing. So I'll put it I'll put it on the uh, I'll put it on the on the again links so you guys can read it for me because I have no idea how to pronounce their name and. Seriously, if you guys want to like run something to your city council or whatever, if you guys are within that area and try to like actually help, you know, them not lose their business, that'd be great. But yeah, we're going to move on here. And I'm for some reason looking up how to pronounce their last name. Apparently it's Russian. It's Georgian. All right. So it's like former Soviet Russia, that kind of thing. Uh, but Megalaje, Megalaje. That's how you pronounce it. I don't know. I feel like that's not right. Let's see. I'm still looking it up. We will get to the bottom of this, Megalaje. Eh, I don't know. That sounds right, but I'm Gladze. I'm Gladze. I don't know. That that could be right, Gladze. All right, so sorry for wasting your time. Uh, let's just move on. Uh, let's see, last thing here. GOP lawmakers take FDA to task over vapor crackdown. Yeah, the GOP is starting to step in. Uh, let's see what they have to say. Republican lawmakers have called the FDA on the on the carpet over the agency's crackdown on vapor products. The FDA's recent moves to strip flavor products from all age accessible from all ages accessible retail locations as 
well as to ban menthol flavored traditional combustible tobacco products entirely has met headlines lately here for example but just within the past two days gop lawmakers have spoken up to add their own thoughts on the matter said senator ron johnson uh via twitter none no one wants kids to use tobacco but the u but the at us the fda proposes to proposes action will also affect adults americans who use e-cigarette products to quit smoking regulatory overreach could reduce alternative to cigarettes and i have other unintended consequences and have other in unintended consequences adding his own reply significantly as regards the potential ban of menthol flavored and traditional combustible cigarettes u.s senator richard burr of north carolina said this is not the first time the fda has tried to ban to ban menthol but th these efforts have been unsuccessful in the past it is troubling however that the administration that pledges to put america first is targeting legal american-made products instead of focusing its attention on states that flout federal drug laws if the united states continues to down this path and following in canada's footsteps we will be following in canada's footsteps banning menthol but legalizing recreational drug use i hope the administration will choose a better way to protect our children all right so um yes politics are very controversial especially when it comes to party associations and all that kind of thing I personally do not uh, subscribe to any party. Just not my thing. I don't care for either side. I don't see. I see what benefits can come and I see what non benefits can come. And I feel that, you know, in the end, no matter how you slice it, we're still all human. We come into the world the same way. We go out of it the same way, you know, depending on situational. I mean, that's a whole different thing, but we born, we're born, we die. And that's it. I mean, that's who we are. We are humans. And I do hate that we divide ourselves based on nationality, on traditions, on culture. I mean, if anything coming to, and I know this sounds all granola as fuck. Trust me. I get that. But just coming more together on the idea that in the end, we're still all human. We still all, we bleed, we eat, we sleep we do all that kind of thing i don't want to be too fucking vulgar but we shit drinking time and in the end i mean and i feel like i'm i'm going on a tangent here but i'm not my point is we are human we are all one people we are people and at a point uh you know getting all worked up of what party said what who said what doesn't really matter in the end we just have to make sure that we as humans have the best available anything and everything that we can get especially in this country i mean we live in the united states we always talk about land of the free that this country is this and that and yeah it's it's a great country to live in but sometimes we for, we kind of lose sight of what our goals as a nation is and we just start bickering and fighting and i personally think that that just kind of like becomes a more it, it takes it takes center stage over the actual issues and things that need to be done so with that being said i do appreciate that somebody in the political realm is speaking up for you know flavored vapor products i wish that more would recognize the the idea of what flavored products do how we use them, why we use them, and all that kind of thing. Uh, if you watch some of my past videos, I go into a full-blown explanation on why flavors are important in vaping. And if you want me to go on that rant again, I'll do it. But right now, I'm just, it's been a really awkward day, and I'm not even sure how I feel about a whole lot of things. So I'm just kind of, I'm doing this because I want to, and I want to, you know, put out my, my video for this week. But uh, I'm kind of like in a really weird moment right now. So with that being said, just... As always, let your representatives know how you feel. I mean, like I said, I wish we would start having all these like moral 
divisions when it comes to politics and actually try to better our country for the betterment of the country, not for the betterment of a political power or on who's who or what's what. Because in the end, we're still all human. And that's just what it comes down to. So, uh, Casa.org, stay up to date on things. Uh, not blowing smoke. I quit smoking by vaping.com. All great avenues that will let you in on certain things, let you know what's going on uh, locally, states, federal, and even like sources like vapenews.com, uh, vapenewsmagazine.com. Or actually, no, it is vapenewsmagazine. No, it's vapenews.com. Okay, I thought it was Vape News Magazine. All right, so, you know, with that all being said, seriously, try to keep up to date with what's going on in your area. And fight for your right, because if you don't, who will? I I can only do so much, and I live in my state, which is a giant state, and there's only so much I can do around here, let alone try to do it nationwide. And I mean, same goes for any other personality you see on YouTube, any other reviewer, any person that does anything in social media, anybody that does anything. If you're not willing to stand for your rights to vape, why the fuck should anybody else? Uh, I know that's like a very fucked up way to say that, but seriously, if you're not going to fight then why should somebody fight for you? They're going to fight for themselves. Just like I fight for myself to keep vaping. Cause I do enjoy it. And it's something I wholly believe in. So with that being said, uh, we're going to stop with the rantiness and we're going to move into some beer. Let's go get the beer. All right, guys, so uh, beer. So this week uh, we are going to do, what is this called again? I'm trying to like read this little weird one over here, but uh, it's Better Half from Founders. Let's see, it'll focus. Oh, uh, Yeah, I've been trying to read this bit right here. I can't read it. But yeah, that's Better Half from Founders. Let's see what it has here as a description, uh, as a, as a, what is it? Description. Yeah, like I said earlier, I'm not, I'm doing kind of air. Yeah, and it is what it is. Uh, let's see. What tames an old like curmudgeon? Curmudgeon. Is that what that says? Curmudgeon? Yeah, it says curmudgeon. Okay. Curmudgeon. The tender embrace of oak and sweet maple. That's what the result is. Is curmudgeon's better half. Uh, harmonious. Hmm. Matrimony of our deceptively smooth old ale brewed with molasses and tame and time spent aging in a bourbon barrel that have previously held maple syrup because all counterparts should be sweet, rich, and utterly delicious. This was bottled August 20th, 2018, 12% by volume, which means it will get me a little toasty all righty so and this is a 12 ounce bottle i think it's like 10 bucks for the four pack of these so uh let's let's open this sucker and let's see how we feel uh last week uh i had the i had i was using my my red wings bottle opener keychain and i actually got the question to ask if i was a red wing uh since i'm a red wings fan am i from michigan i am not from michigan but i am just a fan of the team i am from la so yeah i mean i don't know i like i'm first generation so i feel like i'm playing maverick at favorite sports teams is kind of fun because i really i like i'm from la and we do have the kings when it comes to hockey but i could care less for them even though gretzky played for them for a bit I could still, I'm just, me, nee, whatever. And, um, uh, just not, I never was a fan of the Kings. Uh, if anything, I was a fan of the Ducks, mostly because of the Mighty Ducks movie. But other than that, I just, yeah. I was always like a fan of like the Red Wings when it came to, uh, hockey, baseball. I'm actually a Dodgers fan, which that's kind of like not that surprising kind of thing. Uh, Football, Packers, and basketball, Red uh, Chicago Bulls. So I am all over the place. All right, so look at that. That oh my god, that 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 looks really nice. It's a really it reminds me of like of an Irish red or something like that. Not much head. It wiggles, it wobbles, it does all that kind of thing. All right, let's see. I've been like kind of stuffy all day, 
So we'll see if I'm going to be able to like get the aroma out of this pretty good. Yeah, you can smell that molasses. It's like the first thing that punches you. The bourbon follows it right there and it kind of just lingers in your nose. It has like a like uh almost it reminds me of like what uh like a coffee stout would be, but not really if that makes any sense. It's not really a coffee stout, but it has like it wants to be a coffee stout. So I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna go in for a taste and see what I think. Oh wow. No. Okay, so it promises on the molasses and it holds up with the molasses. Uh that just has a straight up punch of sugar. Like that was just that is way too sweet for me. I I don't know how I feel about that. I'm gonna try to drink it, but I don't know how I feel about that. I, I, my god. That was way too sweet. Way too much sugar. Uh, I'm not the world's biggest fan of sugar. I like sugary drinks. I like soda. I like things like that. But in all reality, like sugar isn't my favorite thing. I'm more of like, uh, I would take a steak any day over a piece of candy, but that's just me. Uh, even like with my vapes, I try to find like the least sugary things uh, possible. I like flavors, but I don't like things that are overly sweetened. And right now this is one of those, this is overly sweetened. And I feel that anything I try with it is just going to sweeten it even more. Uh, let's try that slam cake morning and see how that goes. And hopefully it doesn't get really bad. All right. So cheers. Oh, no. Okay, I'm stopping right there. I'm sorry. I can't do that. Uh, Founders usually make some really good beers. I love their coffee stouts, their breakfast stouts. That right there is too much for me, personally. That just straight up tastes like sugar. I cannot do it. And honestly, as much as I would like to continue with with the experiment that is the beer... uh, This is going to be one of those. I'm going to have to dump it out. You can taste a little bit of the hops and other things that are supposed to be in there that are, you know, traditional to beer. But that sugar is just what gets me. I just know. I I think I'm done. I'm going to use Coke to, like, wash it down a little bit. That's how really sweet it is that even the Coke tastes, like, more muted. That was really bad. Uh now I got the hiccups. So if you guys want to check that out, give it a try. Personally, not my thing. Really disappointed because I was excited about that beer, to be honest. I was very excited about it. But no, not doing it. Not today. Not today. You you, you could have it all to yourselves. That's all for you guys. I'm sorry. I ain't going to do it. I'm not putting myself through that any more than I already have. So uh, with that all being said, advocacy keep on it do your part please and yeah i'll catch you guys next week uh yeah what is next week uh next week is the 19th so i'll catch you guys then christmas week i'm kind of putting this out there now i am doing nothing christmas week uh that's time for family and normally i record on mondays but uh, monday is christmas eve and that for me is family time and that's when i do all my christmas stuff christmas day tends to be just a day of relaxation and doing nothing Like, we go to my wife's family's house, like uh, her aunt's house. But other than that, we sleep in and we do nothing. So, Mondays is where I get all the Christmas stuff out of the way. So, uh, I'll catch you guys next week. And, yeah, hopefully you guys are doing really good out there. Getting them them, uh, shopping deals. Because, oh, my God, it's been ridiculous the last couple weeks. And the worst part is this is the most broke I am throughout the year. So, I can't buy anything. So, it is what it is. And, yeah, so advocacy you always uh as always you don't have to do everything but you at least have to do something know it live it and i'll catch you guys next week vape on mix on gotta fix up that mustache